Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a GameStar presentation. Tonight we have a game for, uh, with the number 34 position team challenging for number 4 and this very strange cyber gamer open ladder system that has been newly implemented. My name is Coldblood and joining me this evening making his casting debut it will be Maka and Friends top laner Mendrix. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me here today. It's um, great to see what's going to happen and hopefully it's going to be a great game. Okay, so of course you have played at least against the uh, NRG Gaming guys who will be on the right. Okay, so yes. I've, I've already... No, actually no, I was right there. So Vice Gaming at number four at the moment. I don't think either of these teams have actually played in the new ladder. So the, the, the positions don't actually mean too much. But uh, nonetheless, we will go ahead and jump into the champion select here. I'll need to apologize, ladies and gents. I've just gotten off 14 hours of work, and I would rather be sleeping right now. But the uh, beck and call of League of Legends is uh, inside my head, and uh, Mendrix was around doing nothing, so we got him in as well. <laughs> okay, so uh, to answer a stope, there should be no delay unless there's 30 seconds, and then there's a built-in three-minute delay in the league line, of course. So... Uh, that uh, three and a half minutes is, is normally pretty good. So we are into the game now here, Mendrix. I believe you've played against both of these teams before, and immediately we can see Blitz Lucian and Jinx banned out by Vice Gaming, so heavily focusing on the bot lane. Yeah, definitely there. Lucian's a very, very sh um, strong pick right now. Um, recently in the current uh, patch nest that's coming up, it's uh, Lucian's actually going to be copying a little bit of a nerf there. Um, Jinx is one of those characters that just snowballs ridiculously. So She's um, like I one think of the only gonna... AD carries who can stand up to Lucian. <laughs> pretty much, yeah, you can say that. She yeah. is pretty much one of the only AD carries that can stand up to Lucian. But yeah, um, her, yeah her they've been a... is just so snowbally, like you were saying. Well, yeah, she basically she's around. like hit and run. Yeah, that whole hit and run tactics that she goes through. She's pretty insane when she um decides to get running around. Oh, it can be ridiculous to deal with. Graggy, Lux, and Kasten banned out by NRG, so they're focusing wholly on the mid lane. Now, I'm trying to remember who the mid lanes for these teams are. If I had to hazard a guess, I'd say Skinny Vinny is uh, NRG Gaming's for Vice Gaming. I actually only uh, remember Ruben and Leha. I, I don't remember the other three, so wouldn't be able to answer you there, as we can already see some picks coming out. Annie was the first pick, and she's starting to fall off a little bit in popularity, uh, because all-in support's becoming a lot more popular. The Tarek, the Leona, uh, even stuff like Nautilus and Malphite have made a resurgence. So it's, it's surprising to me to first pick the Annie, unless it will be going mid. Well, yeah, it's hard to say what's happening with the whole new meta changes as time go on. With um, support, like, as you said, Leona and Tarek are becoming more all in in that regard, and I think it's partly due to the fact that they can get gold now. Before, these characters were very um, gold-dependent characters, whereas Annie, on the other hand, she would become very disruptive either way, regardless of whether she got that gold or not. Yeah, um, that's definitely fair enough. The, there was a suggestion I saw on the forum, actually, that... Uh asked if Annie's Tibbers could be made similar to Leona ulti. Only pops her passive like right where Tibbers lands, not in an AoE around it. Uh, do you think that would be viable? It's it's hard to say because that's this is one of those things where you, you would be punishing her mid lane yeah. in order to affect her support. It's one of those things you're taking from Paul to give to Soul and you shouldn't really do that to yeah, any character in my opinion. That's a pretty toxic thing to do honestly. Is it, it's um, happened to yeah. a lot of heroes, actually. Yeah, well, that's what's happened. There have been a lot of things where, like, Zyra, for example, they had to nerf her AP ratios in order to compensate for the fact of how powerful her base damage on her plants were. Yeah. Yeah, they had to... Uh, they, I remember when she came out, she took a whole slew of nerfs, and then someone decided to take her bot, and uh, that started up a craze. So, shout yeah. out to Liggy Bro 123 who went under the knife and became Liggy Girl who is reminding me of past mistakes that I'm trying to forget. Thanks a lot, bro. And it looks like Jubilee is the mid laner for Vice Gaming. He's very upset that he has been targeted in the bands. <laughs> and he may be going Annie indeed, or he could go the Jaime. I'd be very I happy think that, with that. that. I'd be happy with that too, but I honestly feel like he's just trolling us right now. Yeah. Um, he's, Jaime has was a very strong pick. Yes. Hello? Are you there, Mendrix? 
Okay, so we'll have to wait for Mendrix to reconnect, ladies and gents. We will continue on nonetheless, so we can see... Oh, okay. So hopefully he'll call me back as soon as that one is alright. Uh, also, shout out to Ace Dope, who's telling Jubilee the Noobly to silence himself. And it looks like Annie will be going bot in... Uh, in the interim, as Riku could be going top, or it could be Susan. I'm so excited, guys. Susan has made it through the uh, the champ select. That is a very rare thing to happen. And Oriana is very... Oh, well, actually, there's not too many champs there that synergize too nicely. Only if a Sonic Wave from the Lee Sin lands on to... There's no, there's no even real decent targets for NRG Gaming, which is quite scary. And we know that Elfish Guy 11 is very proficient on the Thresh, so it's scary that they've managed to pick that one up. Hopefully Mendrix rejoins me, because I was enjoying casting with him. Okay, so we do black out the summoners just so the players can't uh, just so the players can't ghost each other on the stream. Uh, trying to figure out what's going on with the calling, so uh, ignore the. Okay, <laughs> not sure what's going on there. So in 30 seconds, we will be able to reveal who is taking what and who is going where. Um, the matchups that we can be certain about. Uh, I mean, you don't normally see Shivana mid, so we can assume that will be Riven against the Oriana. And uh, we normally see Riven as a counterpick to Zed. Um, I'm just going to try and call Mendrix again here, guys. Hopefully it actually connects. Uh, the net is being very bad. We do need the National Broadband Network to come. And we're having more problems there, so he'll have to tell me when he's ready. Uh, and we are now into the delay. Hang on, we'll just answer the call. And no, it's still not good. Um, okay, so we're going to take the black out here. And we can see that it will be Susan heading into the jungle. With Riku going up top against the Shivana. That's going to be an interesting one, honestly. Shivana, of course, has amazing base stats. Very, very tanky champion. Uh, and does rely on the attack speed, though. And if Lee Sin, who will be cute Korean kid who in the lobby was saying that she is female, and uh, I feel like that was trolling, but nonetheless. If he does level the E, which is the uh, the Tempest and or oh, something that makes you attack really slowly, it could be quite uh, bad for the Shivana. Okay, we're just going to call Mendix again here, ladies and gents. Hopefully that's all right now. Uh, okay, are you there, Mendrix? Nope, okay. So, sorry for that, ladies and gents. We'll have to wait for him to fix that one. So, down in the bottom lane, we will have the Ezreal Thresh versus the Vayne Annie. Now, that is a very scary combo if Annie manages to land the stun, and then Vayne gets into position to knock them into the wall. That could be very bad. We can see the cleanse has been picked up by Otem, and uh, we have seen Otem quite a few times, which, um, on AD carry, that is. He is very proficient there. Um... I wonder if Mendrix is okay, so we'll, um, we'll try calling Mendrix again. Uh, how's that going? Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is, uh, it, it, the, uh, Murphy's Law states that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So he's going to log on to his other computer here, so the mic might be a bit lower quality. Okay, so the Vayne Annie combo is quite potent, but uh, Elvish Guy and Otem both very skilled at their relevant positions. So uh, would not be surprised to see them do just fine. The uh, between the Lantern and the Arcane Shift, the mobility is off the hook there. Uh, we're gonna call Mendrix again. Hopefully it works here. Don't let us down, Skype. No, it. Uh... Oh, did it work there? Just trying to find out what happened. Uh, in the jungle, it will be J4 versus Susan. Uh, of course, Jarvan has a lot more of um, a lot more of an impact in the early stages of the game. Narcissus is better for objective control. The Fury of the Sands allows him to solo the dragon very, very easily. He um, uh, and of course the Spirit Fire makes it very uh, very easy to hold lanes as well stop the early pushing of course there isn't too much pushing on the other side maybe skinny vinny on the shivana and we will now be heading into the skin battle so we'll just wait for that one to load up try and get mendrix back on the skype might actually just reset mine here 
Okay, so I'm excited to see both of these teams play. It's been a while since uh, we got a request for them. Good old Blazian has uh, been in the Twitch chat in the previous few broadcasts and has uh, re requested me to ca not carry, sorry, cover this game for him. And I'm excited to do so, and it looks like we have a few people in the Twitch chat who are too. We have Jaziken and Shift Shaper 1000 both going for Blazian. And uh, so shout out to you guys, thank you for tuning in. Now we're going to try and call Mendrix again. Are you going to work now, Skype? Let's have a look. Are you able to answer, Mendrix? We'll, we'll wait for it. So shout out to Sushi X Rules, who is having a bit of a go at Vice. Um, so Vice are the underdogs apparently coming into this. There was three votes for each team in the Cyber Gamer game. Oh, actually, we're into the skin medal already. So I'll go ahead and bring that one up. So Blazian has a lot of friends in the Twitch chat, so welcome, guys. We'll have to see if he can carry from the Jungle Jarvan. And with uh, the skins, we can see the uh, the K9 Narsus, which is a pretty decent skin. It's quite rare as well. We'll have the Coconut Throwing Lee Sin, the Championship Thresh, the Battle Bunny Riven. It looks like NRG will take away the skin battle. Looks like Elfish Guy managed to pick himself up the, uh, the skin that a lot of Thresh players do enjoy getting. So hopefully Mandrix can uh, rejoin me as soon as he gets his Skype working. And uh, we should be jumping into the game any second now. We're just waiting on cute Korean kid to load up. Uh, now, as far as level 1 power goes... Oh, okay. <laughs> we can go over the level 1 power. I'll just quickly uh, fix up what's going on up here. Uh, we can assume that they're going there. There we go. So, representing Vice Gaming, who are currently number 4 on the CG Open Ladder, will be Leha69 on the right K4, K9 Narsus. Will be Little Chip on the Annie. His partner in crime will be Ruben2 on the Aristocrat, Aristocrat Vein. We have Cute Korean Kid on the Lee Looks like they may be going for a 2v1, actually. As uh, we're going to recall Mendrix here. Cute Korean Kid going to be on the bot Lee by himself. Jubilee is the Oriana going to be using the ball to scout out. And for NRG Gaming, we will have Blazian on the J4. It looks like the purple team actually going to be going for an invade down here. We have Otum on the Ezreal, who I think he was Nottingham. We have Elfish Guy as his partner on the Thresh. We do have Shivana played by Skinny Vinny up at the top, or perhaps at the bottom, if that's deci they decide that's what they do. And in the mid, we will have Posidus 01. Um... Okay, so we're still having trouble getting Mendrix on the line. Cute Korean could could be in a lot of trouble there. He will get scouted out. Can they get the hook on him? No, he will get the flash away. And that will signal him to get out. So a flash blown in exchange for not a lot. And the pause will come out here. We'll just try and figure out what's going on. Leah is lagging. Okay, so we need our Susan to be in tip-top fighting position. Leah has, has swimming lessons, says Jubilee, who, uh, despite being banned out in all three of the enemy team's bands, was... Uh... Okay, let's see if we can get Mandrix on the Skype this time. Hello, Mandrix, can you hear me? Hello. Sorry about that, guys. Ah, that's alright. It's, uh, they say 15th time lucky. Which 15th time you? lucky, definitely. <laughs> okay, so are you spectating the game with me? Right now I'm coming back in. Okay, so we are at the 1 minute and 40 mark at the moment. We had Lee Sin have his flash blown to escape the hook of Elfish Guy, and it did not land. So looks like we will have the blue team, who of course are um, Vice Gaming. And Juby's actually going to spot... NRG Gaming coming in, led by Blazian, and actually the red buff will attack into the bush, which gives away the blue team's position. Blazian going to be forced out of there without blowing a single thing. Ruben going to chuck his trinket down in the bush, and a successful red steal goes out by Vice Gaming, and it's normally the other way around with the Susan versus J4 matchup, so that is a great start for the defenders tonight. Definitely good to hear. I'm still making my way back in right now. Although this loading screen is, is very lovely right now, <laughs> must admit. 
seeing a lot, I like seeing all these diamonds and platinums running around. It makes me think this is going to be an exciting game. Yeah, well, we are at the two and a half minute mark at the moment, Mendrick, so just let me know when you're in. We actually do have a 1v2, which was initiated by Vice. Uh, Lee Sin, I believe, does a little bit better than Shivana. Of course, Shivana is very, very tanky with the Dragonborn passive. So, and because you know Lee Sin has more range capability, he's got the uh, the safeguard and the lifesteal from that ability. He should be okay. It looks like uh, NRG going to be pushing forward quite well. The problem is they're pushing against a team with a jungle Narsus, and leveling the spirit fire makes it very very easy to counter push so they've got to keep that in mind and not only that but the uh, the towers get bonus armor before the eight minute mark so it's gonna be tricky to get the uh, the towers down in time indeed it is it's um interesting to see that they've decided to do a lane swap between these two um considering Chovina has such a such incredible wave clear in comparison to Lee Sin, you'd think that um, maybe it wouldn't, wouldn't have been a good idea to do this, but... I'd say they want to get Ruben free farming on the vein. That would be the only reason to do this. And they that do have Narsus for the counter push, so I don't think they'll lose the tower too early. Uh, Kukarin could actually taking a lot of damage here. Going to be equal CS with the Shivana, and it looks like the top tower going to be at a much healthier position thanks to the wave clear that you mentioned. Ruben two not going to be able to do too much there, and of course. The um, the range from Annie is quite good, or Skinny Vini going to take some damage at the top. The range from Annie is good, the range from Vayne is not. So if Blazin was to come in at, you know, the wrong time for Ruben too, if he's overextending, it's going to be much harder for him to get away as opposed to, say, a thresh Ezreal combo against a Susan. That's definitely true. Um, one of the big things that we could um, put into the fact is if um, Thresh was to get that hook, which he um, unfortunately just missed there against Cute Korean Kid, he would, um, in fact, more give you a more definite kill. Whereas with the Jarvan, it could be dodged by the Q that Ruben has. That's very true. Yeah, Tumble gives uh, Vayne a lot of low cooldown mobility. It looks like Blazing going to be hanging up at the top to try and give Skinny Vinny a little bit of reinforcement. Cute Korean Kid was uh, thinking about recalling, but Leah69 going to be backing him or her up there. I think it is a him from the way that she, uh, it was sh insisting that it was female. Oh, the hook actually going to land onto Cute Korean Kid as he safeguards He's... onto Leah69 and the Arcane Shift as... will pick up the kill there. The Lantern is used to disengage. That was beautifully done by NRG and absolutely awful timing by cute Korean kid. You can't get much more unlucky than that. Unfortunately for him, he um, hanged around for too long. Most of the time you should just back off. Jump into the a hook is never a good it, idea. <laughs> indeed, yeah, start jumping in the hook is never a good idea. Uh, but that was actually fantastic by Otom there to flash in after that and um, follow up with that kill and still managed he to get away. Both his summon it up. It was only the arcane shift he used. We just arcane shift and that's actually quite impressive. Yeah. And he's got the cleanse available should Wither catch him out under the tower. Didn't have to blow that either, so very well done by NRG Gaming. Now, it's interesting to note that Jubilee on the Orianna has opted to go for the Fiendish Codex over any type of armor. And, of course, Riven is 100% physical damage, so not getting armor against someone with such mobility is a very bold move. I guess uh, Jubilee is feeling very confident in his kiting capability because if Riven jumps on top of him and he has no flesh, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, one of the reasons I can um, put this to is because of um, Ariana's low cooldowns, or having a lower cooldown allows her to shield herself more often. Ah, uh, that, and, uh, that is in, very in that, true, yeah. In that regard, it, that's probably probably better than armor in any case, in just if you um, completely remove damage instead of mitigating some damage. Yeah, that's definitely fair enough. That could be what's going through his mind. He's, n he's opted not to level Command Protect, which does give you more armor and magic resist when the ball is on you. It goes up by five per level. Looks like Ooh. we will have another pause. Last time it was because Lee has was lagging. It is once again happening. And uh, Vice going to try and rectify that situation. So we can see the gold <laughs> is 600 in NRG's favor. Noobs <laughs> and their net goes out. Uh, the CS looking quite even across the board, honestly. It's uh, almost bang on even in every lane. So it's purely the first blood and just a couple of creeps on the side that will be making the difference. It's quite interesting to note that um, Riven is actually even pretty much even, as you said, with Oriana there. I would think she would be a little bit more behind in that regard, considering Oriana's range and has a, a very good wave clear in that. Mm. I've seen a lot of Oriana's farm themselves victory, and the game is back into play right now. Okay, so it's, of course, Orianna is just like Lulu. She makes it very hard to kite the melees. Um, 
So Susan's gonna have a hard, uh, sorry, not a harder time, an easier time getting into these fights. But the the counter engage from NRG is just so strong. They've got Cataclysm, they've got Key Burst, they've got Thresh's entire kit. It's gonna be <laughs> difficult for them to get the fight that they want as a. Uh, Cute Korean kid going to get a nice dodge down there. And actually, Jubilee going to be coming in from behind. Oh, not from behind. So, going to be backing up Cute Korean kid there. Going to hesitate just a little bit as Lee has going to pick up some nice free farm in the mid. And it's interesting to note, actually, I think we've said that about 10 times between us, is Elfish Guy 11 opted not to go for Relic Shield or anything like that. He actually started with Rejove B. I wonder if that is for an early emblem of... Oh, no, that doesn't even exist anymore. I don't even know yeah. why he's got that one. Oh, I, it can go into um, Aegis. It is a component of it. It's interesting to know. You'd think, um, considering the, um, with the new changes that they made, that he'd want to, you know, take advantage of every opportunity he can to maximize the amount of gold potential he has. Uh, but it, I guess maybe he just figured that with runes and basically the fact that he doesn't need to buy wards, he believes that's enough and he can go straight into um, building items from this. Yeah, well, he's got an extra 200 over the Annie who started off with the GP10, has 138, so the assist and uh, I must, he must have the pickpocket mastery. As, uh, he has been harassing down cute Korean kid. There is a, I think it's called Bandit or something. It's quite strong. Uh, yes, and shout every... out to, sorry, shot. one sec, Mendrix. Uh, shout out to Jaziken, who is asking if this is patch 3.14. It is indeed. Uh, 3.15 has yet to come out. That's, uh, that's why Lucian was still banned out. And, uh, <laughs> we, yeah, this is before the patch. The bonus armor on the towers has dissipated. And I really think Leah's needed to be down here more, honestly. Is this tower dangerously close to falling? The top one is as well, but Dragon's Descent is available. And I think the threat of that alone will force them to back off. It's actually Skinny Vinny fairly behind on the CS, but once this top tower falls and NRG rotate to top, I feel like Shivana's going to have a fairly easy time against the Lee Sin. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure Shivana scales better than Lee Sin towards like And down, going down, lock. Kukurian gives in trouble. He almost managed just to get Otam, oh. and oh, at the last second, he just fumbles it, and Otam gets away on the skin of his teeth there. Nice shield by Elfish Guy 11 there to absorb some of the hits. The top tower will end up falling, which lessens the gold lead for NRG to only 400 with it goes down under Skinny Vinny. But the bottom tower will fall as we say that, so it is a comfortable 1k lead for the rank 34 challengers doing pretty well for being that far down the ladder. Blazian getting bullied out of his red once again which is a very difficult situation to be in. Looks like the Dragon will not be picked up by the purple team here. And actually, Poseidon 01 is going to come in and try and chase them off. Has not popped Blade of the Exile. Does have Flash available, though. Nine and a half minute Bloodthirster completed on Otam. He's going straight for the Mystic Shot damage. And of course, it does scale with the true 100 damage on True Shot Barrage. That seems kind of ridiculous to me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You'd be sniping people from across the map all the time, basically. Anytime he sees anyone thinking thinking that they might be wanting to back off, that is always going to be a lingering thought in their mind, and they might have to delay that back off, simply because they might be scared of where Oto might be shooting that true shot barrage. Yeah, that's definitely something they've got to keep in mind. Let's have a look at Susan's uh, stacks. He has bonus damage 21, not the most frightening of Susan's, but it, when, his, uh, ga when his team initiated the 2v1, he kind of really expected too much farm here, as 800 gold is in NRG's favour. They're going to pick themselves up a dragon, or as the Europeans call him, the drake. The coconut barely going to miss Otum there, and it looks as though Skinny Vinny gets to get some nice free farm. Easily going to catch back up, and just as you say, the more Lee Sin falls off, the stronger Shivana will get. So it's uh, a ma NRG, they're looking fairly comfortable at the moment. If they can deal with the vein and the late game team fights, which they definitely have the capacity to do, they should be looking golden. They should be they should be fine in the late game. They actually have quite um an impressive wombo combo in the Annie and the Oriana in the end game. And not to mention they have the hyper carry of known as Vayne, who is insane in the late game. And, and couple that with the fact Well, Susan, yes. <laughs> Here he comes walking up, ready to go. Well, Susan is also one of those characters that if he gets to late game, he is a force that you just cannot deal with. It's impossible. And which is why he's actually been banned a lot in the solo queue, I found. And in every CG game, I, this is the first time I've seen the poor guy 
in so long. I don't know how in the space of a few months he goes from like completely trash to ridiculously overpowered. I think. I guess yeah, I, you know, continue, continue. Skin's open. Oh, actually, we're going to oh, see wow. the ultimate come out from both Riven and the Annie there. Nice Tibbers will go down and they will finish that one up. Double kill for the Susan. Cataclysm oh, comes off and that was fantastically done by Blazian. Going to get a return kill on that one. NRG still leading by 1.2k, but what a fantastic engage from Little Chip there and very nice follow up. As I was saying before, that Wombo combo is very strong with yeah. those two. <laughs> Wombo, the Wombo that. combo be strong with them. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, that, and that just showed you with that power there. Um, Susan, unfortunately, getting a little bit... Oh, he oh. comes in completion, but I think he might have bit off two more than he can chew. Oh, getting away his again. fan club oh. giving him some false bravado. <laughs> <laughs> but he will He's backing away there, looking to lick his wounds, unfortunately, for him. I was going to say, watch out for the Ezreal snipe, but uh, that would be friendly fire, so we're not going to allow that one. Blazin going back with only 300... Oh, well, he has 300 gold because he just finished his uh, Spirit of the Ancient Golem. Actually, we can see the flash forward in the mid by Poseidus 01. The Tiamat will be popped, and Jubilee, no chance of getting out of that one, has gone for the Grail build, despite being against quite an AD-heavy team, honestly. Ezreal has a bit of magic. Shivana has a decent bit of magic. The rest is physical, so it's surprising to me the Jubilee is still going for quite a greedy, unholy grail build. He's definitely going to have to go at least Seekers, if not Hourglass, next. Yeah, I don't see why. I understand the whole concept of what I was saying before with the whole, um, you know, more power, uh, more cooldown reduction, more shielding. But if you're not going to be building into uh, your shield, then there's no point in really going for that grail first against an AD mid. Oh, it, it lets him AoE wave clear which is uh, pretty decent against Riven, on honestly. He can keep his distance there, as Ruben too going to finish the 13 and a half minute Blade of the Ruin King. So, unfortunately for Vice, their 2v1, biting them in the behind just a little bit as Otem came off decidedly better from that. Both of their CSs are looking very good, but Otem a full 1,000 gold ahead. Blazian going to be standing on top of a ward there, but the Shockwave will not come out. And uh, is it even available? It is indeed, because of course 20% CDR Ori can use that ability quite often. But for now, it looks as though... Uh, I was going to say Dragon's respawning soon, but it's not actually in the next few minutes. Yeah, they seem to be postured around there quite a bit. And I was thinking, oh, I was thinking did I miss something? Shouldn't the timer be up for us saying that the Dragon <laughs> will be available in 2.3 minutes? Right, and it's supposed to carry you're... unobservant <laughs> Exactly. Like I was, was going to call us something worse than that, but uh, we'll try and keep uh... it PG. <laughs> Try to keep it PG rated. Right I yeah. think that's a good idea. <laughs> so these teams both uh, posturing in the mid lane here. The uh, mid tower for NRG is falling lower and lower. And of course that is a very important map objective. Opens the map up very wide. It's, it's interesting because uh, Vice, they've got, you know, some early game power in the Lee Sin Annie, and then they've got some late game power in the Vayne Susan. The mid game is going to be resting largely on Jubilee's so shoulders, and he's not quite at the point where his Shockwave will be doing enough damage to be much more than utility. As a Poseidus 01 working towards the little chip, going to hop away at the last second, fitting the bunny skin that he has on, and... I'm wondering why the Vice Gaming guys are trying to go for that mid so much. Is NRG are just farming up from it continually. Skinny Vinny is starting to catch up more and more after being zoned out so hard. We have uh, Susan who's only at the... still at 24 on the... I hope, I hope that's a bug honestly because 24, it should be a heck of a lot higher at this point. Uh, 24 in which regard? As in uh, the... Current bonus damage, 24. So oh, really? That's, yeah, it must hit, be bugs, um, yeah. Because he's been 24 for a while now. Oh. That's yeah, like you, that... you mentioned 24 before, actually. Yeah, I do okay. remember. Something's weird here. Something, something's happening here with this. So he must be, he, he's probably, he's probably they're saying 24. Everyone's thinking, oh, don't worry, guys. This, that suit is only hitting 24 extra damage. And next thing you know, their copper yeah. bonus 300 damage. Yeah. <laughs> I don't it's think it'd be, be 300 just yet. Even a lane Narcissus would be, it'd be hard to get 300 at this point. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I know what you mean. Actually, we can see the push down by Poseidus 01 trying to split the attention of Vice here. They've got to get this tower or they're going to lose their bot. 
Oh, well, I mean, the, the, they're not mutually exclusive, of course. Lee has 69, going to be headed down there. Jubilee going to uh, narrowly dodge a Mystic shot by standing there and continuing to recall. NRG going to be waiting here. The Sunfire Cape has been finished on Skinny Vinny, going to allow him to wave clear even faster. And like we said before, the engage and the disengage from NRG is quite strong. But if they get caught out, the Wombo Combo will be very difficult for them to deal with. As the hook is going oh, to land on that Ruben. That's a fantastic hook there. That, uh, oh, nice shockwave is going to come out in response there. Besides, one going to be coming in. Lee Sin is nowhere near this fight. Blazian will end up falling to the Ignite. Ruben 2 is somehow still alive. No, he takes a Mystic Shot to the face as the hook will land onto Lee at 69. And then flash from Elfish Guy to avoid that last command attack. Besides, one should be able to get out. And when all is said and done, the 4v5 becomes a two for two with uh, 80 carry and support slash jungler going down for each team. That was crazy as Coconut will land flash forward still going by through. Korean Kid, but he just kicked a ribbon right into his vein. Who will go down? Leah 69 barely picks that one up, actually gets a 432 bounty on two Riven. And nice plays by cute Korean Kid, but I'm sure Ruben 2 wasn't too happy with it. They're, they're just exploding right now. They've come through and they've almost taken two towers from that fight. There is it 100 was... gold separating the teams. They, well, that was a fantastic catch-up by mm. them. That was um, that was an amazing hook by Thresh there, but it ended up um, coming back to bite them in the ass there in the end. Yeah, the <laughs> the plays from cute Korean kid, not quite what they were looking for. He will go and finish his Ravenous Hydra after picking that kill up. Probably wants to try and pick up his Boots of Speed, or as it's called in the Dota 2, the Brown Boots. Uh, uh, I think just Boots 1 sounds better, honestly, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm being corrupted. As Dragon will now respawn, NRG were right on the timing of that one. Smite is available for Blazian as it has like a two-second cooldown in the preseason. Hook will land onto Little Chip, a, and the Flash oh. will get blown, so that will stop the Flash Tibbers in the future. Little Chip barely lives through the True Shot Barrage, thanks to his team uh, taking off some of the damage from it. And the dragon will be continue to be worked on by NRG Gaming. Lee has 69 is nearby, and of course the ultimate will do a lot of damage to the dragon should he go for the steal. Uh, Skinny Vinny is up at the top lane, going to be working away at the tower. Cute Korean kid going to be coming in in the mid. We see the flash go out from Poseidon. So one dragon will be taken by NRG in exchange for Riven's flash. That is a trade I would make any day, as Riven, frankly enough, does not need flash to be mobile as heck. Pretty much. The amount of times I've seen her jump over a wall is quite frustrating. Yeah, I don't know why they, why they did that for her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was just one of those fun things. They figured, hey, why the hell not? Let's just make her a bit more of a power day. This champ can chase anyone. Let's make it even <laughs> harder to get away. Oh, actually, she What's uses that? You use like, flash? No worries. She uses it more to split push, and then it's like, oh, I got caught. Lol, well, never mind. There's thin walls everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> As Elvis that, Guy going to that use... That was a little bit cute oh. there, I must admit. Yeah, it was nice. Oh, we're actually going to go off an Elfish Guy 11. Will NRG engage with such an important cooldown down? Looks like they will not. They don't actually have too much uh, auto attack reliantness on their team, despite being AD heavy. Uh, and, you know, Shivana has the most magic damage on the team, and she's probably the most auto attack reliant. Otum can spam the Mystic Shots. Will go back and finish up the Sheen for himself. Also has Phage as. Oh, Hook barely misses Ruben, too, there. Top Tower gonna take a little bit of damage as True Shot Barrage. Ezreal coming through. Completely misses the minions, even though it was right on top of them. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Yeah. It is, it is a sad moment for Ezreal when that does, when that happens. Happens a lot with uh, Luxold as well. <laughs> oh, yes, that is one of the most frustrating things I've seen happen before, where it, it is clearly on the person yeah. you were trying to kill, and it just doesn't go through. It's like one of Donkey's videos. Oh, the laser's gonna miss, even though it went right through the center of them. <laughs> He's a crazy guy, he cracks me he up. Is a, he is a funny guy. As we're coming through, um, Lee Sin is just making his way down bottom for some great farm there. Um, I'm surprised to see there's no wards around Baron except for the, just in the tribe bushes there and that um, bush just behind the red. Um, considering it's a 20 minute mark, I believe, um, is it, uh, excuse, excuse me if Vice I'm wrong, Vice left. game. <laughs> yeah, Vice, yes, Vice, Vice would be able to go for this because they are um, right now, they seem to be more in a commanding lead over NRG Gaming even though that 1000 gold deficit is there. No, they've definitely got the, uh, the layout of the map going and I mean between Fury of the Sands and Silver Bolts, they've got percentage damage coming out the wazoo. Baron would fall incredibly quickly. So, uh, 
I think you're right that NIG need to get some control of that as far as vision goes. We can see Talisman of Ascension will be finished up by both of the supports here. That will be very important going into these fights as both teams need to try and get the upper hand over the other. The mid tower has a surprising amount of health for Vice Gaming as uh, the bottom tower was the only one to fall for them. NIG have lost all, no, not all the tier 1s. They've lost both of mid and the T1 at top. The uh, T1 at bottom is actually fairly healthy, so it's uh, going to take a while for them to finish that one up. And well, unfortunately for them, I mean, mid is the one that opens up the game. And it's, yeah. that's something you can see. The moment that mid tower was taken, it just seems that even though they've got the that 1,000 gold deficit, mm -hmm. exactly, they, they just seem to be exploding into... um. They've been taking more favorable engagements, been finding ways to... um. You know, harass that red, or obviously been harassing the red the whole game for population. But yeah. you know, the, the, basically that middle tower is what you need to make sure you get, and to have it still pretty much ninety percent at this point in the game, especially when the late game favors um, Vice Gaming, it's it's going to be pretty bad news for NRG. Well, to be fair, I mean Riven is fairly strong later on. Uh, this Ezreal build with the Bloodthirster and Triforce he's actually going to have a decent bit of burst and sustain damage as well not nearly as much of Vayne but he will be safer actually the hook's going to land on Jubilee Flash is forced in exchange for absolutely nothing as far as the cooldowns go nice lantern will get him out of there before the shockwave can come out Elfish Guy making the flashes be blown by Jubilee as uh, top tower is very close to going down Lee is going to try and stop that one so they definitely have the right idea so even though the late game of Vice oh, is Comes Poseidus is coming in right now with his ultimate blown. He's going up oh, with that dragon rage away. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, that was uh, uh well, both of their cooldowns are such. I mean, so both of their alts have such low cooldowns. It's not even that big a deal. It's just like, yeah, they'll be up again in 10 seconds. So whatever. Yeah, pretty much. It's just sometimes the Riven pops that old, and next thing you know, you're dead. Oh, skinny Vinny, what are you doing? You crazy son of a. He, <laughs> he tower dived the tower when no one was there, whacked it, and then ran away from uh, Lee has 69. Oh, I don't know how that hook missed Riven. Oh, not Riven, sorry, Vayne. Ah, oh, they look the same anyway, whatevs. As Jubilee gonna be down at the bot, has the needlessly large rod, getting to the stage where you will notice when the shockwave goes up, as the health bars will disintegrate. Sightstone's being finished by Q Korean Kid, his mobility will be insane now. Blazing was trying to sneak behind and get the jump. Top tower will eventually fall as Leia 69, forced back by Narcissus' outrageous mana cost. Oh, sorry, not Narcissus, I don't know who that is, I meant Susan. As uh, Elfish Guy gonna take <laughs> a lot of damage, actually. Caught. Whoa! Shockwave, that was shock beautiful. Goes. Both of the low health people are going to be popped by that. And Vayne going to finish that one up with the AD from final hour. Down at the bottom lane, Q Korean Kid going to easily fall to Poseidus 01. But definitely not worth it for NRG in the end. Unless they pick up the bottom tower, which they will not. As Jubilee will be heading down there to try and deal with it. But still, his armor is at 70 against a Riven with a Brutalizer and, you know, 250. He's easily going to pick up this tower. And not a lot will be said from it. Skinny Vinny gonna pop the Dragon's Ascent in the mid, is going for Spirit Visage and will not land on top of Little Chip. So as far as the gold goes, still in NIG's favor, they're starting to take those objectives like we said. The mid tower falling lower and lower actually. Odom gonna be po uh, jumped on by the Tibbers, forced to use Cleanse to get the heck out of there. So Tibbers for Cleanse, easily worth it as of course Susan can lay the Wither down and make it more difficult for him to lay out the sustained damage. Zydus 01 waiting at the bottom lane here, and like you said, Mendrix, this mid lane has to be the priority for NRG. Right now, they have, they have done a good job getting it down, but um, it's, as the longer it stays up, the more um, more team fights that uh, Vice Gaming is just going to win as time goes yeah. on. They're able uh, to retreat back to it, and it's, they, they don't quite have, like, they've got a lot of tanky people, but under, like, they, they need to have, like, drawn out fights with their team comp. And cut around, that sort of you thing. You can't under a tower. It just doesn't work. Oh, can the steel come out from Jubilee? No. Nice smite there by Blazing to secure the dragon. Going to catapult them into a 2.7k goal lead. I love it when someone has 0, .0 because it makes it quite easy to tell who is where. And uh, <laughs> as far as things go, cute Korean kid not going to be able to steal the red away from Poseidus. Oh, one going to try and do some split pushing of his own. We'll have a look. At the gold values, it looks like 8.1 for Oriana, 7.9 for Vayne, with 9k for both Riven and Ezreal. So, NRG, they've got the gold they need on Coming the Coming up right top, people. the Sider seems to be in trouble right now. 
Oh, yes, Poseidon, so one going to use the Dragon third Rage. pop of the Q to try and knock them back. It does indeed, and the shield, the Valor, will be enough. Leas is going to flash out of that. Damasia shouts Jarvan as he jumps onto Susan and takes him down. Cute Korean kid forced to blow the flash to try and get out of there. Tibbers goes down, does a lot of damage to Blazing Ignite will go off, and Command Attack will finish that one off. Lee Sin going to get out of there as Otem is jumped on. There is nothing that can be done about that one. Elvish Guy will land the hook onto Ruben, but a beautiful Shockwave will come out. Skinny Vinny going to get stunned into the wall. They're not going to be able to escape this one. Barely gets taken down by the Dragon as Jude Lee going to engage forward. But Poseidon's a one with the turnaround, and they cannot deal with that with the little armor that they have. Ends up being three for four in NRG's favor with some beautiful Riven play as Skinny Vinny has a very cheeky little dodge there on the Sonic Wave, preventing that becoming 4 for 4, and NRG walk away with the victory in the end. I like how all of that was created purely from that mobility we were just discussing before being yeah. extremely overpowered. <laughs> oh man, Poseidus 01, he's got a, a clear um, understanding of Riven's limits, which is... It he's going right now on Nasus right now. His ultimate has been popped. He's going through. Oh wow! He's and there you go. That's that's the that's the understanding of Riven you were Man, talking Susan's about. Susan's right not there. meant to die that quickly. <laughs> Susan is not meant to die that quickly. Um, probably because uh, he didn't have his ultimate at the time, but and, and because Riven's mainly a more of a cooldown um, champion instead yeah. of an attack speed champion. That Whether basically that does pretty much yeah. The, the Wither wouldn't have been that effective on her. I wonder if Leas has just been like doesn't care about the Q stacks and actually is at uh, 48 damage, because his, his damage really is really low for a 27 minute Narcissus. That seems a bit weird, I must admit. Um, it, you'd think with the, you know, with having the, so much more um, minions um, available for him to yeah. not miss. He's mid for quite a while. Hmm, it could be just, it, I don't know if this is a bug, or maybe he is just playing, sorry yeah. to say, this bad. Oh, well, you know, when you, you consider Narcissus Jungle, he early game, he's all about the Spirit Fire, and he did a good job of uh, preventing the bottom tower from going down long enough for the top one to be the first casualty as far as structures go. So he did decent in that. He was just... He could have gotten some more last hits in with the Siphoning Cube, but probably didn't want to sit around waiting for the cooldown, just, you know, cleared as quickly as he could to get some levels and headed to help his lane. It looks like the last T1 of the game will now fall down at the bottom lane as uh, the Tri Brush is under suspicion by both Jubilee and Cute Korean Kid. Now has a ward in there as Poseidus 01 has the Guardian Angel up. That is a key pickup. Randuin's is almost finished on Skinny Vinny along with the Spirit Visage. He will be a complete brick wall. Last Whisper almost finished by Otem. So many key items are on the horizon for them and have been completed. For the Vice Gaming, do any items stick out to you as being key? Um, basically, that, that Guardian Angel on Poseidus right now, he is, seems to be snowballing out of control. He's one of the most terrifying Rivens I've seen in quite a long time. And he actually has more farm than Oriana right That's now. That's actually that saying something, because Riven's in every damn game. <laughs> that, that is saying something. Riven is in every damn game. He's, he's been banned out quite a bit. But I'm, as you see going down there, he's just dominating that lane. There's no way Kareen, Q Kareen could ever engage him. No, he um, single-handedly that... forces back the offense in the mid lane. And there we go, just queuing away. That's, yep, that's Riven for you. Hoppity but that's a... Uh, what I'm amazed about is that farm. The fact that he has more farm than Oriana. That is that is something to begin with. And up top, we see they're going for Baron right now. Oh, that is beautiful play from NRG. Keep them looking at one hand while you perform a trick with the other. It looks like Little Chip is onto them, though. Does have some CDR from the Fiendish Podex. Doesn't get the ward off. There he goes. The pink ward will clear that one out. And actually, is it going to force the retreat on the Baron? Talisman of Ascension will get popped there. The pink ward will be taken out. And it looks like Blue are going to say thank you very much. We'll take this Baron Skinny Vinny. Going to be chased away by Ruben too, but it won't take too much damage after that. Blazian's going to be coming in, and Susan ends up getting the last hit there, but is falling lower and lower. Blazian forced to get out of the fight. Red buff will not finish him. Ruben too going to stun Odom up against the wall, but a beautiful cleanse will get him out. Blazian will end up falling to Annie. Elfish guy going to get a nice flay off. Will it be enough to save Odom? No, it will not. Final hour provides too much AD, and that was disastrous for NRG. And as we can see, there's the late game vein we were talking about before. Oh, bottom lane, we can see the flash goes out. Pipe Bazidus 01, but safeguard to the ward will get cute Korean kid out. Actually going to interrupt the recall there with the Sonic Wave. Going to try and bop the Guardian Angel, but the Valor will be enough to finish that. Ignite goes off just to finish it up, and Jubilee is even there to ensure Poseidus 01 goes down. He's going to try and turn it around, but he has no chance in this situation. And when I say no chance, he actually gets close to killing two of them. But <laughs> meanwhile, the mid-tier 3 will go down, 
and that throw at Baron may be the beginning of the end for NRG as Ruben 2 will be too far forward, get jumped on by Blazian. He has no chance of getting out of this one despite dodging the hook. Little Chip is like, no. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's so much that that little girl can do to help the big one. Yeah. Oh. But as we can see going through, as you were mentioning before, it seems it was the nail in the coffin, that particular throw. Uh, Riven was really needed at that Baron. As much as she was causing a diversion there, she should have ran up yeah. as they came through. And if she had gone through, it would have been guaranteed to have cleaned up a team fight then. Yeah, it was very nice smiting by Leia69 to secure that one. Very decisive advice. Someone made the call. All right, this is our basketball now. And they did go in. The engage went in by NRG, but it was not enough. I don't think a single member of Vice went down. I believe I saw a shockwave that was ridiculous from Jubilee, and then he transitioned straight to the bottom lane to help deal with the Riven. Both the GA and her life will be taken away. Last Whisper has been finished by the Riven now, so her damage going to skyrocket once again. It was already high. And it was really nice play out of Little Chip and Ruben too, honestly. They took down Elfish Guy and Otem 1, despite really nice flays, really nice cleanses. Was not enough to escape the uh, the Night Hunter. The Night Hunter is one of those champions that you have to know when to engage. And yeah. she basically showed no fear there when she went through. She was on the front line. So that's one of the one things that you need to know the, the difference between a good vein and a great vein. A good vein will sit behind, be a good little you know, ADC carry, and make sure she's protected. A great vein will know when to jump into the front lines and completely yeah. obliterate She's so strong as a 1v1 assassin. That's the kind of playstyle she is. Once she gets these items, she weaves in a fight with her stealth. And of course, it's harder to reveal her in the fights now as Otem actually going to have the blue taken away there. I'm not sure who managed to get that in the end. It looks like Ruben 2 did walk away with it. But yeah, just exactly like you say, Vayne becoming an assassin in these fights. And her team did a great job of splitting up. Fair enough, it was 4v4 with the uh, the important Riven absent. And the not as important as far as damage goes Lee Sin. It was, it was just greatly controlled by Vice once they got the Baron. I feel like if uh, Baron had gone the way of Red Team, the fight would have looked different. I t in my opinion, that probably would have been the case. It seems like one of those games where, um, I honestly believe, with right? the teams, yeah, yeah, Baron is actually quite big. Because in that particular thing, if Red Team had gotten Baron then, they would have had, not only would they have had the mid-game gold bonus on, you know, favoring them forward as they went, um, as they went through, they would have, um, easily won that team fight. Oh, Hook going to land on the Lea 69 there, but will get forced back in the end. The mid lane being relentlessly pushed by the Lee Sin. A Shivana going to try and deal with it, and actually in the mid lane, the safeguard is forced away. The bottom tier 2 has fallen to about half of its HP. And yeah, what you're saying, Mendrix, I feel like uh, the um, momentum is an important factor for these teams, because when the Baron suddenly died, you saw blue team like snap into gear. They suddenly just started decimating. And it was like that Terminator button had been pushed and there was nothing they could do to yeah. stop. Oh, definitely. And Elephish Guy is actually going to get the engage going on. The tower will be ignored as Susan is going to run forward. Little Chip going to fall to Bazidus. 01 Blazing going to be ignited. Ends up falling to Cute Korean Kid. As Elfish Guy 11 trying to cut under the tower. Lee has 69. Can he flash out of that one? He can indeed. But Bazidus 01 is in hot pursuit. Jubilee going to try and get the shockwave off. It does oh, indeed. Wow. That dis, dis, uh, whatever the W is called, dis something, just did ridiculous burst and ends up being 4 4 2 with the tower also going down and the nail in the coffin that you mentioned may be wedging its way deeper in as the only one alive for NRG is Skinny Vinny and Shivana is a lot of things but she's not good at preventing range champions from hitting something. Pretty much. I mean, she can jump in right now with Dragon Rage but I think she will just be kited into yeah. Oblivion. Or just, you know, true damaged into death. <laughs> Pretty much one of the two. <laughs> I, guess she can, I guess she can choose really. Oh, actually, she's trying she to go for it. As soon as Jubilee gets away, going to be knocked back there. But a nice engage by Blazing going to help out there. As soon as Jubilee left, Skinny Vinny went straight for the juggler. Jubilee going to be locked up by Elfish. Guys, Skinny Vinny going to try and get that off. Randuin's is popped. The uh, the W of her, I'm going to find out what that is she's called. She's not getting it away. It is the dissonance. Is the uh, the W command dissonance. But nice engage by NRG to take that down. They are currently in a 5v3 situation. But... Uh, uh, they've got actually they've got both their inhibitors up. They're at lowish health though, so someone is going to have to stick around on the defense. But this could be an opportunity for uh, NRG to go in. Uh, uh, Blaze. Well, uh, there's so many tanky people on their team, and then Ezreal does very respectable damage. 
Looks like he will be going for the Quicksilver Sash as well. Bane's still down for another five seconds. I don't think they can go any further than this, what they've gone right now as soon as she enters the field. Not to mention uh, Riku is at top. <laughs> True indeed, actually. <laughs> that cute Korean kid, he's going ready. He's got that tower, actually, too. This is probably a good idea for um, energy, energy Gaming to actually set up for Baron, considering it's going to be up in another five, um, 50 seconds. And oh, well, it is true. Some... That, was, that was a quick uh, six and a half minutes. Yeah, it was. It was a pretty action packed. That's pretty much why it was just out of the blue. But um, yeah, they really do need this next Baron if they want to be able to um, get back into this game. It's going to be very interesting. Both teams have a lot of AoE potential. So the Baron pit is a dangerous place to be for all 10 members of this team. Skinny Vinny go for, gonna go for the Thorn Mail, is trying to find a way to deal with this vein. And uh, honestly, I mean, Ruben too, with the Guardian Angel now, becoming very difficult to deal with. Final Hour providing, uh, I thought it was 90 AD, but that's just the movement speed. 55 AD, still very respectable. Hey, oh, actually, Tibbers will go down under Elvish Guy 11 there. Will pop Flash the Flash. Clone. And the Talisman Ascension, and... Uh, I'm wondering if that's worth it. Tibbers is down for oh, another while. Baron will get started up here. There will be no flashes coming out of Thresh, but there is plenty of mobility from the rest of NRG. They will be coming in here. Now is Blazing and Smite skills up to the task. He's going to have to get a move on as... Oh, Smite will go off by layer 69. At least no one died needlessly there. As Ruben 2 going to be relentlessly pursuing here. Skinny Vinny going to try and pass the red buff over to Otum. No, they're going to smite that away just for safety's sake. Cute Korean kid leading the charge forward. Will Elfish Guy 11 take a sonic wave? Actually going to catch out Cute Korean kid. They will not go for it. Oh, actually, Blazing Balls of Steel going to be going in. Cute Korean kid going to try and uh, kick Otum into his team. But all he does is kick Otum towards the side of his base and gives his life for it. Oh, beautiful hook from Elfish. Elfish Guy 11, the box will go off, it flashes to the other side of it, Randuins will go off, Little Chip gonna flash into a True Shot Barrage there, Jubilee gonna try and disengage that Cataclysm, goes off, trapping Jubilee in with the Shivana, but Vayne was just there, free hitting the entire time, Residus 01 has his Guardian Angel back available, Otem gonna jump over the wall, I think that may have actually been the flash that he used there, and... When all is said and done, it is an NRG game's favor. Despite the Baron, Poseidus 01 trying to trade Guardian Angels, but the red buff will pop his Ruben 2 folly solo from Otem. The Guardian Angel thrown away by Poseidus 01 there. He's trying to be sneaky, but Jubilee is zoning as Ruben 2 going to get some nice lifesteal from the race. Ends up being 3 for 3 with Baron buff on Vice Gaming. So, so close. Yeah, Kukurian keep getting a little bit antsy there. I think he felt that he had his team behind him then, and they just happened to go, oh, no, 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 let's take mid. That's, <laughs> that, that doesn't have a tower there. And Kukurian's like, no, 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 I we can this, do this. Guys. We got this. I've Kick got this. the trees, oh, dear. <laughs> and unfortunately, thrown away that bar um, barren opportunity for them. But um, Energy Gaming did really good there to take advantage of that and come, and, come out on top with the, um, what is it, was that a three, for, that was a three for two trade, wasn't it? Oh, it was three for three with, um... Uh, I think Skinny yep. Vinny chased Vayne trying to pop the GA and it went down. And of course, uh, Riven's Guardian Angel was popped. So we've got to take that into consideration with Ruben 2 still having the white aura around him. And he, it was nicely done by NRG, but they've got to deal with this vein. They can't let That's... Susan distract more than one person. Leia69 <laughs> actually doing a really good job of zoning out in that fight. He was keeping a couple of people away. I think it was both um, Elfish Guy and Otem were kept right out of the fight by the Susan, and they, they eventually deal with him, but by that point, Vayne was killing the rest of their team. Pretty much. That's one of the um, the problems if you don't be able to get that. Oh, actually, the engage, the engage is going to come off. Talisman of Ascension is popped by both teams. They're beautiful dragons ascent by Ruben. The Cataclysm will go off. Beautiful shockwave comes down, but I don't think it will be enough. Ruben 2 going to be coming back up here, trying to kill Skinny Vinny, but the Randuin's Omen will be enough to slow it down. His command Dissonance going to pick up the J4. That was disastrous for Vice. They had their jungler at top and their top laner at bot as a the only... Uh, casualty is Blazian, the very brave, who goes down in the end. A lot of damage going on to Cute Korean Kid. He's not the most tanky of Lee Sin's beautiful flay. will bring him back into the little team. Leia 69 forced to flash away there. Poseidus 01 going to be hop skipping and jumping after him. Does not have Wind Slash available. I don't believe there is a bug with the UI. Yeah, is going to be forced away there. But Leia 69 is zoned out. No one is going to be up for another 10 seconds. It will be Little Chip with no Tibbers available. Could this be the turnaround? And NRG were waiting for, although they do have to deal with the Narsus. Oh, One of the things like I'm a bit worried about here, that they're going for the win right now. I'm a bit worried right now because they've got a 
But there's a limited time in order to do so, and that Nasus is doing a great job of coming back. Little Chip has come back into the fight, and unfortunately they were unable to end. Oh, that was beautifully done by NRG. They saw the opportunity, and they grabbed it by the balls. Pretty much. They took great advantage of that. And um, that was pretty much one of those things where they just, um, again, flipped a switch, turned Terminator mode on, yeah. and they saw the opportunity. They saw the uh, jungler up top. They saw Lee down bottom, and they said, go for it, gun it, that's it. And from there, they um, basically grabbed them by the balls, as you said. Yeah, Blazian and Elfish Guy did a beautiful job of initiating that fight. Blazian goes down in a blaze of glory. And, I mean, f three Randuins on their team. And they jumped right into the thick of the action. The tanky people were not there to absorb hits. And the blue team went down like a sack of potatoes. Banshee's Veil has been finished up by Otum. That will help a lot in stopping the shockwaves coming up. Will absorb a uh, Tibbers and a Wither. It, it, it's got a lot of decent... Uh, applications there. It stops Leeson jumping to the other side of him and kicking him into the trees as uh, Vice going to continue the offensive. They do uh, both. Oh, actually, the inhibitor has respawned for NRG, and of course, they did add the regeneration to it in the, uh, the pre season patch. So the inhibitor going to be back at full health. NRG have a decent chance of defending this one. Baron is not going to be up for a little while yet, so they don't need to worry about that one. As uh, looks like, oh, very smart by Elfish Guy. Actually going to pick up the uh, upgraded red totem, which gives him a 10 seconds oracles that could be very handy in the fights against Vayne. But he uses it there to uh, stop the vision inside the base, stops the sieging potential of Vice Gaming, and who is going to dictate the fight here, Mendrix? That will decide the winner. Pretty much, uh, basically, they um, energy gaming has the engage. They once they go win, they can, can get their vein. That's oh. all they need. Who they got coming in now? That is what popped it. Will they get the, oh, hook, the hook of the big grab? Okay, the shockwave is going to go off, but actually the rest of the purple team went against Little Chip and oh, NRG got separated way too much. Poseidon so one going to be jumped on by the Annie and taken down way too quickly. Q Korean Kid takes that one down. That was such a nice engage, but the purple team was not there to capitalize. Ruben 2 not going to fall, and Otem will be flashed upon by the Oriana. Q Korean Kid going to try and land the Sonic Wave. No flash will be blown by Otem. Can he defend the entirety of Vice Gaming. GG will be called by Bazidus 01. That was such a nice engage on Vayne, but the purple team did not follow up. It must have just been a, that was just a miscommunication there. I think they said back off, and the other team said saw the opportunity, and as you can see, that's how the cookie crumbles. Oh, that's just so unlucky. NIG had a real opportunity to take that one away. They performed brilliantly, but in the end, Vice were too good. Hourglass goes off by uh, by the Oriana there, who cannot be taken down by the Ezreal Ruben 2, just pew-pewing away at the Nexus, and it does end up falling. And Vice Gaming are the winners of this CG match. That was actually quite the surprising turnaround there at the very end. It felt like pretty much uh, energy gaming had it back and they had momentum going for them, they had everything going for them and that one little whiff, that's, that it just took it away from them. Yeah, if, if they'd followed up, they would have won that for sure. But they, they kind of separated, got Poseidon, so one Skinny Vinny went around uh, chasing Little Chip, whereas Elfish Guy and Blazian jumped straight onto Vayne, locked her up, but the follow-up just was not there. And from what you can see there, they were just able to just, they were like, no worries, thank you very much, we'll pick you off right here and right now. And then uh, Poseidus hesitated, Little Chip saw the opportunity, put down the ult, yeah, and that was, that was a great that catch was on Ruben, that there. stopped the turnaround. Could have run in and pentakill everyone, but Little Chip was there with the Tibbers and ended up turning it around. So we're so, going to have to nominate, oh, sorry, Mendrix, what are we going to say? I was going to ask you, I was about to actually say the same thing. <laughs> who, 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 who do you think is going to be the MVP? Oh, this is a tough one. There was just so much nice playing from all the members of both teams. Uh, Elfish I have yeah, lots of words <laughs> here. I mean... Wants to report his team for not following <laughs> up on his. That was honestly a fantastic uh, Thresh initiation. Just team was not behind him. So it was a, a little bit of everyone's fault for... <laughs> You, you had know. Blasian there, at least. Blasian yeah. was happy to come come in, but unfortunately didn't have the Shyvana. Ruby 2 was in so much trouble if there was actual damage there. <laughs> oh, no, he, he was gone. There was no there was no chance of him getting out of that if that if his team was behind it. With Shyvana ult in, the Riven ult in, the, they, they were very all in in that regard. Yeah. Very all in. Yeah, both teams just 
played so well. I think that's like the fourth time in a row I've said it. Uh, MVP, I don't know if the Twitch chat has any thoughts on who deserves it. It's it's tough to say. I mean, there's just so many factors that went into the win. Everyone played re really well to begin with. I know, I know before I was, you know, kind of knocking Nasus a little bit, but then towards the end he got as tanky as any Nasus should be, and he was he was, was just distracting them the whole time. So he ended up coming out really well. Um, Oriana made a fantastic comeback considering she was yeah. behind at the beginning. That's something, if you, if you look at her score, she's 10-5-13. And she actually was putting out quite a bit of damage towards the end with her um, wombo combo ults with Annie. Yeah, I think we're going to have to hand it to Jubilee on the Oriana. Those shockwaves were brilliant. Even when, you know, the fight was already losing, he got four of them and then instantly died anyway. But <laughs> yeah, pretty was... much. At least he got them off. That's what counts. But I feel like we need to give a joint runner-up to Blazian and Elfish Guy because just time after time, they engaged the perfect fights, uh, counter-engaged the perfect fights, but, you know, the positioning wasn't always perfect. The, 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 the intent was there, you know? Well, I'd like to give that to um, Blasian as well, because I remember one time that during that engage where they had um, down after they picked off Cute Curian Kid and then they managed to pick up, um, I think it was an, um, a bit of, they had a bit of a little fall back after that, but they, were, they had no fear then. Blasian, you know, Blasian was, I saw him on 10% HP and he dead set Cataclysm right into Vayne still. He still went after Vayne of 10% HP. Balls <laughs> of steel. I was just like, Jesus Christ, man. That is that is crazy. But the, these guys, once they, you know, obviously, once they see the opportunity, they go for it. And I like how they don't have hesitation. So that's definitely, between those two, Elvish Guy and Blasian, no hesitation there. Very good in that regard. Well, shout out to Ashen17 with the hardest to read font of all time. He actually makes a decent point. J4 and Flash Thresh can engage over such a large distance that it can be hard to keep up with them. So we've got to keep that in mind. It could have been just the the right engage at, you know, two seconds too early. As uh, Le Leah69 going to nominate himself for MVP, his Nasus <laughs> play early on was good despite only having like 24 stacks <laughs> or whatever. We, we're not sure if the UI was mucking up. If you could tell us how much stacks you actually had Leah69, we'd really appreciate it because the UI was telling us like 24 for half the game. Yeah, we, I saw you at 24 and I'm just thinking, that's not right. That, that was be... what it was 15 minutes ago. Something's wrong here. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to have to close this one out. We'll just give a uh, a quick second to Leah to catch up on the stream. I think it's about 30 seconds behind. Thank you so much for joining me, Mendrix. I hope you will be joining me for more as we move into 2014. It was great to have you. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. That was great fun, actually. And I'm um, sorry about the whole little um, Skype incident oh, we had. Oh, that's all right. That's Murphy's fault. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. <laughs> Pretty much, exactly. <laughs> Damn you, Murphy. Okay. Damn you. Murphy. It looks like Blazian saying that they saw 99 for a lot of the game, so something's they they got to fix that. Maybe that's coming in the 3.15. That must be yeah, it. Must be a bug. So sorry for knocking you there a little bit. You must have had a much. <laughs> well, like man, this, this Susan sucks so much. He's not. Even <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just I was just I'm just thinking Susans. They just they just queue all day. Like oh, what's well, going Guntex on here? is saying he actually had 24, and it sounds like he was. Uh, it wasn't Jubilee. It might have been cute Korean kid, who's saying yeah. that. But of course, we're talking about the Lee Sin that like randomly went in and kicked an Ezreal like further away from his team. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll have to take that with a grain of salt. Pretty much. <laughs> and it may be someone altogether. It might be a little chip. So, thank you for tuning in, ladies and gents. We very much appreciate it. If you head on over to the GameStar Facebook, it's up at the top of your screen. We will be posting the VOD up there. Uh, we look forward to more from both of these teams, so please let us know when the uh, when the fights... Oh, sorry, not the fights. When the, the games have been decided upon and if you'd like your game to be casted please head on over to the Facebook or contact Coldblood on the client and give me some details and I'd be happy to arrange some coverage from you. Any parting words, Mendrix? Oh, go out there and sort your asses off, guys. I, I love putting people on the spot like that. I'm such a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all, no, seriously, these, these teams played very well. I was very impressed with their play. And, um, I'd love to see like a rematch. I would like to see a rematch, considering the new um, new CG system, new ELO that they've got going yeah, right now. It would be, I mean, it, it could be, easily yeah, be a different. You guys could time. actually, if you really wanted to, play another game right now. <laughs> There's actually I'm pretty sure look at the kills. System. Twenty-five to twenty-five. That's wow. Yeah, and they were at like both eighty k gold. <laughs> <laughs> so well played, both teams. This is Cold Blood and Mendrix signing out. <laughs>